Welcome to a short demonstration of Authentication Services version 4.0. Now version 4.0 is the latest offering in the Active Directory bridge space. Now you may be wondering what is a solution in the Active Directory bridge space? Well, what Authentication Services lets you do at, at a very basic level is allows you to join Unix systems to Active Directory and then begin to reap the benefits of that by allowing an Active Directory user to log into the system by extending out Active Directory group policy to Unix systems and even do things like audit Unix information that's now stored in Active Directory. Now I have the control center open here and this is part of version 4.0 and we have a number of new things in here and this how do I section for example if we want to talk about some of the different tools that we provide to help manage this Unix user and group information we have a full set of Unix command line utilities we provide a number of PowerShell commandlets for scripting, and then we provide a snap and extension to some common Windows tools like the Active Directory Users and Computers Console. Let me go ahead and launch that right now. I'm going to find an Active Directory user, and I'm going to look at the properties on this particular user. I'm going to go ahead and, on this particular AD account, say that this user must change their password the next time they log in. And then I'm also going to Unix enable the account. Now Unix enable me account means I'm going to set some Unix attributes on this particular Active Directory user and I'll apply that. Now when you bring Unix together with Active Directory there's really two pieces. One is you have to join the Unix systems up to Active Directory and then if you want to allow an Active Directory user to log in you have to Unix enable the account like I just showed. Now in this particular case I've used our web console to deploy our authentication services agent and join the system up to Active Directory. So from one central location, I can push out the agent and join systems up, very analogous to how you have to join a Windows system to Active Directory. And once I have these pieces in place, I'm going to bring up an SSH client. In this case, I'm using PuTTY. And I'm going to choose that Linux system that I've joined to Active Directory, SLC SUSE 10. And I'm going to go ahead and SSH to that system as my Active Directory user. And when I put in my password, you'll notice that, sure enough, my password has expired. It's now prompting me to change my password because we had that box checked in Active Directory. Let me type in a new password and you'll notice that I've gained access to this particular system. And now let me run a short command here called vast tool klist. And I simply run this command to demonstrate that when I logged into this Unix system, I actually logged in uh, with this Active Directory user, jfbachatexample.com, and I got my Kerberos ticket from Active Directory. And this is important if you want to uh, enable single sign-on scenarios. So for example, when you SSH from Windows to Unix, or if you want to even basically single sign-on in any application that's Kerberos aware. And one last thing, let me show you that if I look for this user uh, here in the local system, you'll notice that this Active Directory user that I use to authenticate to Unix, it does not exist on the local system. So this is not a synchronization product we were actually able to use our AD account to authenticate into Unix. So one of our goals is to reduce the number of accounts that an end user needs. You no longer need to provision local Unix accounts on every one of your systems or even in an LDAP or NIST repository in order for users to log in. So this is just a very brief example of one of the core features of authentication services. I invite you to go ahead and look at uh, the evaluation of authentication services where you can see other things like we can extend Active Directory group policy to Unix, we can audit Unix information that's stored in Active Directory, provide real-time updates and show change history of that information, and we can even enable things like strong authentication. So for example, this particular user that I logged in as, if we wanted to require that when this user logs into Unix they need to provide a token like a hardware or software token, we can do that too. And all these features come out of the box as part of authentication services. So I invite you to go to the authentication services section to read more about the features and functionality and to download a trial version.